All right, so let's uh, conclude this tutorial five um, with the last few sections. So let's talk about set versus set delayed. So here's two different lines of code. Here what we're doing is we are comparing the difference between between x1 equals random integer from 1 to 10 and x2 colon equals random integer from 1 to 10. So x1 here is using set, well just the equal sign, whereas x2 is defined using colon equals. So let's run this and what we'll see here is that there's going to be a difference uh, between what happens if we call these multiple times. So x1 is defined using this set. So once we run this line of code, it's fixed. The output for x1 is fixed. So if we were to ask, let's figure out what x1 is 10 different times, it's going to be the same every time. On the other hand, what x2 colon equals random integer from 1 to 10 says is don't actually set x2 to be equal to anything, only set it to be equal to something once it's run. So if we call x2 multiple times, it's going to apply this rule, random integer 110, differently each time. x2 doesn't exist until it's called and uh, evaluated. So this is explaining why when we're defining a function we'll want to use colon equals because we only want the right hand side to be evaluated once we know what the inputs are. All right, so let's go on to uh, one more, one more uh, method in which people often use for loops but you don't have to here in Mathematica. So often you'll use a for loop to apply the same function over and over and over to the same input. Um, in Mathematica, to do that, you can use the nest command. So uh, what the nest command does is it takes the input and, it, and it, ta it takes a function and an input and it applies that function multiple times to the input, uh, one after the other after the other. So it's kind of like nesting, right? It's taking uh, your input and you're taking your function, function applied, function applied, function applied. Uh, if you want to see what the results are along the way, you can use nest list. So here's a quick example of using this question mark, right? The question mark command here uh, just lets us pull in the information from the documentation center about what does nest do, what does nest list do, and so nest gives an expression with f applied n times and nest list is giving a list of the results applying f 0 through n times. So let's look at this example here where we're going to create a new function called subtract1. I know, silly, silly little function. It takes x and it subtracts 1 from x. So if we were to apply this function to 100 four times well, it would start at 100 and it would subtract 1 four times. So the final answer should indeed be 96. Right, so if we were to draw this out using um, Mathematica and wrote out each of the times we applied it, we would get subtract 1 of subtract 1 of subtract 1 of subtract 1 of 100, nesting it inside of each other four times. And so that's the same as doing 100 minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 equals 96. Now, this is just giving the final answer. If you want to know what the results are along the way, you would use nest list, and you would see if you apply it 0 times, you get 100. If you apply it 1 time, you get 99. If you apply it 2 times, you get 98. 3 times 97, and 4 times 96. And that's what nest gave. Um, let's do, let's go and talk about, we talked about map earlier, 
What I like to do is do an extension of that called map thread. This is more advanced. Um, so let's 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 go into the details. So when we're using map, we use it to apply to a function that takes in one input and it applies it to each element in a list of objects. Now, if you create a function that takes in multiple inputs and you want more than one of those inputs to vary, you're going to have to use map thread instead. All right, so let's look at this function. Here's a function that takes in three inputs, x, y, and z. And it creates x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Right, this is the square of the distance from zero from the origin to x, y, and z to the to the vector x, y, z. Um, and let's say we have a list here of x's, y's, and z's. So let's say we have this point. We have we have these are the x coordinates, these are the y coordinates, and these are the z coordinates. And so what we'd like to do is we'd like to maybe apply this function which I didn't evaluate. We want to apply this function to 1810 and then 219 and then 348 and then 497, etc. When these lists are all of the same length, we can do that. So how does map thread work? What map thread does is it takes an input which is the function and the function that has multiple inputs and it takes as a second, in, a second input the list of the pieces for the first input, the second input, the third input, etc. So what map thread is going to do is it's going to apply the function to x1, y1, z1. So that's going to be 1 plus 64 plus 100, which is 165. And then it's going to apply it to x2, y2, z2. So that's 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 9 squared. So 81, 82, 86. That gives us 86. And it does it for every triple along the way. So it's going to apply it to f of x1, y1, z1 up through f of x10, y10, z10. Uh, we could have done this using a table command, right? The table command would have said, hey, let's take, let's take the i to be the index. The index is going to go from 1 up to the length of the list. And we'd like to know what is x list of i, y list of i, z list of i, and plug it into function. But map thread is a much cleaner way to do that. So let's do some examples. Let's say we wanted to calculate sine of 0, cosine of pi over 3, tangent of 2 pi over 3, cotangent of pi, secant of 4 pi over 3, and cosecant of 5 pi over 3 using map thread. All right, to do that, we need to create a list of the functions and the list of the um, and the list of the values. So we're going to have f list is going to be sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. And then we need a list of, let's put a semicolon, suppress the output. Then we want a list of the values. And that's going to be 0. Well, these are multiples of pi over 3. So let's just do range of i of from 0 to 5 pi over 3 by pi over 3s. And that's going to make sure we're going to make sure we got the right ones. Good. So those are our list of functions and our list of values. And so what do we want? We need a function now that takes in a function and a value and it gives the function of the value. So let's create um, the apply function. Okay, so that's going to take in a function 
and it's going to take in a value. And remember, we need some underscores here to say these are the inputs. And the output is going to be function of value. Right, so it's going to take as an input what the function is. It's going to take as input what the value is, and it's going to put the function in here. It's going to put the value into that function. So we've created this new function called apply function. And what we need to do now is do map thread of apply function to the function list and the values. Okay, so what's this doing? It's saying we have a list of functions, we have a list of values, send those into the apply function one at a time, each pair at a time. And when we do that, we get sine of zero is zero, cosine of pi over three is one half, tangent of two pi over three is negative square root of three, etc. Let's do one more example. We'd like to create the following list of colorful days of the week. So what do we need to do? So in order to do this, we need to add color or other font styling using the style function. So let's just see what this looks like. So style of Monday, and we want it to be red. This is going to take Monday and turn it to be red. So in order to use map thread, what we need is we need the pairs. So we need the days of the week, and that's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So those are our days of the week. And then we need colors. And the colors are going to be red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So those are our days of the week, those are our colors, and now we need a function, and we'll call you color function. All right, and color function is going to take in a day, or maybe we'll call it a word, and then it will also bring in a color. And what we've decided that the rule is, is we should do style of word, comma color, right? We, this is the structure of what we want it to look like. We're creating a function that takes in two entries, puts the word in the first part, puts the color in the second part, and creates uh, this as the output, style word color. So now if we do color function, right? So let's just check to make sure this works. Color function of Monday and red, gives exactly what we want. So to apply this to every part of the list, we create map thread of days of the week colors, and that's going to give an error. So let's check to see what's wrong with our error. Um, object color at position two comma one in map thread here has only zero of required one dimensions. Oh. Right, haha, -ha. look at that. I made a mistake because here's the map thread. How does map thread work? First, what you need to do is you need to give it the function and then you give it the list of pieces. So this isn't the right way to do it. You should do map thread of uh, color function because that's the function, right? Every time you use map, you always have a function at the beginning. And then the second input is the list of things that go into the function. So map thread of color function, comma, and then the inputs are the days of the week and the colors. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Bam. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.